good, hello, welcome to Onion Skin. And a warm welcome to you in this Toon Boom tutorial all about bone rigging a character using Harmony Essentials. Yes, Harmony Essentials, that means anyone using Toon Boom should be able to follow along with this tutorial just fine. In just one video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about setting up a character and getting it ready for animation. The first thing to do, grab a brush, grab a pencil, and just start sketching. Keep in mind it's a good idea to keep arms and legs outstretched, because then there's nothing overlapping, there's a lot less guesswork when it comes to putting bones in it and getting it prepared. Also, if this is your first rig, I encourage you to go something with this sort of design around its waist. Its legs disappearing up behind a jacket or a dress or skirt or something like that. Having thighs connecting to hips can be quite difficult at first, so having a character design that is, you know, cleverly designed around that, you simply don't have to worry about it when we come to animating this character a bit later on. So, what do I want to be doing exactly? Um, okay, let's give him a nose for a head and has eyes where the nostrils would be but he wears he wears this jacket because he likes to think that he's real cool and hardcore but no one no one else takes him seriously because there was that one time when he sneezed and and all this snot came out from around his eyeballs and everyone kept laughing he was super embarrassed and then he started crying in front of everyone it was just this horrible mixture of snot and tears coming around from his eyeballs and dripping down the front of his nose face oh poor guy we feel for him so there is a sketch that, that will do nicely the next step when you come to inking it this you have to approach a little bit cleverly in the timeline at the create drawing button, press that and you get, you're given a dialog box that has add or add and close. We're going to be focusing on the add button. Start from the bottom and work your way up thinking about every piece that you think would need to be a different layer. Left foot, left leg, right foot, right leg, torso, left arm, left hand, right arm, right hand. And then head and facial elements can take up quite a lot of layers just on their own. Head, mouth, face, left eye, right eye, left pupil, right pupil, left eyebrow, right eyebrow, different pieces of hair, it depends how intricate you want it to be. All these pieces will become grouped together in different ways later on. Every time you write down an element, press add, and you see that you can just keep adding more and more layers, they are all blank, but when that's done, press close. Now select the light table button in the bottom left corner of the camera view. You can see the light bulb. Turn that on with a pencil or brush tool selected. Everything will become faded out except for the layer you are currently working on. Start from the bottom again and work your way up. The left foot layer, ink up the left foot. Left leg layer, ink up the left leg. Make sure you close in any gaps that would normally be disappearing behind other elements of the body. Once everything is inked up, it's time to start thinking already about color. Head over to the color panel, add a whole bunch of new swatches, and have a quick think about what your color scheme should be. Head back through your layers once again, filling with color to fill in all of the gaps. A couple of quick tricks if you're encountering some issues, if some parts aren't filling, if there's small gaps. Select the brush tool and in tool properties down at the very bottom of the panel there is a button that looks like a swirl with a blue squiggly going through it. Select that, this is paint behind. So you can manually color in gaps that may be appearing without fear of it overlapping your current artwork. For other moments such as the left arm, you can see the shoulder and the torso like that, that needs to stay being a gap. The solution for this, press K on your keyboard and this will allow you to see the vector construction lines that make up your drawing. If you click and hold on the paint bucket tool, there is, there is one that looks like a circle with a squiggly going through it. This is called the stroke tool. This allows you to draw invisible lines. So you can now draw and connect that shoulder together, but when you go to paint bucket it, it will not spill over into the rest of the artwork. So with those couple of extra tricks, you should be able to finish filling in your character across all of the layers. Okay, so at this stage, you should have everything now colored and arranged in a series of layers. They may be in a very disorientated layer, but that's okay. We don't sort that out until the very, very end. I've also sorted out the colors here, just sort of named them appropriate to what they are. Got rid of the colors that I'm not using. So these colors may very well be just be temporary placeholders. That's fine. We can sort out colors at any stage in the process because they're saved inside those swatches. 
With the drawings done, with the layering done, we can now move into the actual rigging process. This is divided into a couple of steps. It's very easy to do. It's quite fun and quite quick to do as well. But there are a few steps involved and it's easy to get lost if it's your first time doing it. So watch as closely as you can. You may need to do this a couple of times before it starts to, to click. There's three main tools in the process of doing this. First is the free transform tool down here underneath animation mode. This is what's used to actually to move, animate, manipulate the elements themselves. To set the pieces up, we need two other tools. They are found up in this top bar here. To activate them, select a window and go toolbars and activate advanced animation. It will appear here. And then right click here and select deformation. That gives us these two toolbars here. Inside of it, there are two tools we're going to be using today. The first is the hammer and spanner. This creates bones and this rotation tool here. This will set up the rotation point for elements that do not require bones. To start, we just need to lay the bones down on each of the elements that require them. This is very easy to do. Select the torso element and activate the hammer spanner, which is our main deformation tool. We're gonna to start up the torso from the bottom to the top. Just go click, 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 click giving us four pieces, working our way up the torso. These rings up here, these can be adjusted on the torso, make them nice and big. They go as wide as touching each other. Repeat this on the four limbs. This time working their way down, they make a bit more sense. Shoulder, elbow, wrist. You can shrink the joint down a bit, but keep it outside of the edges of the artwork. Shoulder, elbow, wrist. Each time remember to select the layer of the artwork first. The legs work a little bit different. On the right leg, I'm gonna start from the ankle, knee, hip. This is important, especially if it is your first rig. You may find that it will make things easier when animating one of these characters for the first time. With that, our bones are already done. You can see, very quick to do. Now flip back over to the transform tool. You'll notice that all of the bones have turned green. When they're red, that's edit mode. Green is animation mode. When we move them now, it's going to pull their assigned artwork along with it. Grabbing the circle with the kind of crosshair in it, that is the, the root. It will move the entire thing. Rolling over the stick portion of the bone, you'll notice the cursor turns into a rotating arrow thing. This means it can be picked up and bent accordingly. Going over the joint itself gives us a four arrow pointing thing, which allows us to pull and stretch the bone up. This is good for creating foreshortening effects. Now we simply need to test that everything is working and not just breaking horribly. Of course, everything is going to be completely separated, but just give everything a bit of a twist. So see for yourself how far things can go. So you can see here, this one cannot go very far forwards, but by combining a few of the others, we are able to get a decent amount of lean forward. So I've tested that all the bones move their corresponding piece of artwork the way they should. Now comes the act of pinning it all together into an animatable puppet. When all this works, it's probably one of the most satisfying parts of the process. To do this, we need to do quite a lot of layer work. You can see in my timeline view here, wherever we have placed a bone, it has created a hierarchy. Bone one, two, three, four, with the torso at the bottom. The torso has four bones in it. The arms and legs only have two each. The artwork always appears at the bottom. To be able to animate this properly, we want the arms and the head to be able to follow along with the torso automatically whenever we move it. As we've seen before, the torso just moves on its own. There is a special way to pull this off. I'm going to rename the root bone according to well, what it is. The piece that does this is called the kinematic output. To create one, select the left arm bone and go to the plus symbol at the top of the timeline and go to kinematic output. Our bone hierarchy has been placed inside. Now we can pretty much do whatever we want with it. I'm gonna grab this entire cluster and go down inside of the torso hierarchy and place it just above there. And now you can see the left arm is following along with the torso, but I still have control of the arm on its own. Isn't that cool? I'm going to rename kinematic output, just KO as for short, left arm. So I can collapse that entire cluster and still see what's going on. Right arm will be given the exact same treatment. Rename KO right arm, collapse the whole lot and place it alongside the other two. Inside of the torso hierarchy, the two arms and the torso artwork are all nestled level. The last piece that we want to follow along with the torso is the head. At the moment, all of the facial elements are separate. These need to be inside of a peg together. So on the head, go to the plus symbol and select peg. This can also be done with the orange button here. This is a good shortcut. The head has been placed inside of the head peg. 
Shift click all the other elements and place them above the head artwork inside of the head peg, which can, which can now also be collapsed. The head peg will get a kinematic output just as the others. Rename that, KO head. And just as before, place it alongside the other kinematic outputs at the top of the torso hierarchy. What do we have left to go here? We see that the three elements follow along with the body just fine. My issues are that the hands do not follow with the arms, and the arms, they follow with the neck. You can see, keep your eye on the shoulders, how they are moving around the torso a little bit too dramatically for my liking. Here is kind of the point where I wish that they would stick and not be influenced by this bone. This is very easy to change. All we have to do is take our left and right kinematic arms and move them one bone up in the level. So the head and the torso are influenced by this uppermost piece, but the arms stop at this one. Observe. See, there they go. But the top one just moves the head piece, but not the arms. To get the hands involved, they're a little bit different. They do not need bones at all. I'm gonna crack open the arms all the way, get the right and left hands. Right hand gets nestled down not alongside the right arm, but inside of it. See, as I roll over, the vertical line will jut inside of the layer itself, and now it moves inside. Left hand, same deal, of course. To be able to animate this piece later on, we need to make sure its pivot point is correct. Right now, it is not. This thing does not need a bone in order to move, it needs a pivot point. This is why we created these controls up here. Turn on the rotation tool and we see that its pivot point is way over here in space. Realign that to be on the wrist. There we go. That's now been done for both hands. To give it a test back on the free transform tool, we now see that we can bend the body down using all of these bones and the arm can be lifted up and the hand rotated. All as a singular rigged unit. The feet will require the same treatment with the pivot point. Give them a realignment but it's important that they do not get nestled inside of the leg because they need to stay put flat on the ground as the legs get moved. We're already getting very close to being finished. Only some cosmetic changes really remain. Layering and making our timeline as easy to control later as it can be. Layering is quite a simple process. We can cheat the layering by taking advantage of depth. To relayer something independent of its hierarchy, we need to push it back physically in space turn animation mode off. Remember, make that mental note that animation is turned off. So as soon as we are finished performing these tasks, we can turn it straight back on again. The amount of times I've gotten well into animating a piece only to realize that animation mode was off and I play the thing back and nothing moves. It's death. Select the left leg artwork, hold option or alt on your keyboard and press up. It pops a micrometer into the distance. If you head over to layer properties, you can see on the Z axis, it has changed to position Z 0.001 back. It's moved so little that it will not affect anything with parallax, but just enough that it is now behind. Using the free transform tool, I can just select each of the artwork elements directly and push them back however I need. The only other one up here, is the arm, we need to get that behind the torso as well. And it appears to have taken the hand with it as the hand is indeed nestled. Last thing I believe is the head needs its own pivot point. Select the head peg, not the kinematic output, but the head peg and its pivot point has been thrown wired off. So let's place that somewhere where we would like the neck to pivot from. Keep giving it a bit of a test until it's a place that's right for you. And before I forget, because I nearly did again, animation mode turns back on. The rigging process is now done, this character is ready. The very last thing I'd like to do is to tidy up our timeline and get the hierarchy uh, in order if we were to have multiple characters and things like that. So the torso is all, you know, a very solid unit. If I grab its root, everything but the legs move, but the feet and the legs are sort of just floating loosely. So I'm gonna put each foot inside of a peg and place the leg bone above the foot inside those pegs. They can be collapsed and on my topmost peg layer, create another peg, put everything inside of that. And this will simply become my nose bones master peg. Oh yeah, collapse that all the way down, put his pivot point down by his feet, 
and now the entire character is in one single unit piece that I can drag and move around and place wherever I want. Bone rigging! All done! I'm gonna add one more chain of bones going up his nose head. Give it a go yourself, see how you do. Give us some practice, I hope to return to him someday soon. And give him some animation! I hope to see you when that day comes. Have some fun and I'll see you in the next one.